Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Candy Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today we are showing our Yuletide spirit with this Christmas glitter and foil tumbler tutorial. I've seen a lot of similar looking cups floating around so I thought I would show my spin on creating a beautiful sparkly and colorful tumbler. And like I said before, who says everything has to be red and green anyway? As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below, and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. I did this cup during a live, and what I'm showcasing is the foil pairings with the glitter. So the purple glitter I'm using is Fuchsia Rose from Bougie Glitter Boutique, and the purple flakes are from PDB. So I will link all of these in the bottom description, but the silver I'm using is Chrome from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And I'm showing a silver flake here, but I actually ended up not using it because it wasn't the greatest. And I just used a silver flake from Michaels. Then the green is Mossy Green from Bougie Glitter Boutique and the green flakes are from PDB. Then the red flakes are from Radioactive Glitter and the red glitter is Fire from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And finally, I'm using Persian Pearl. I know this says Bliss, but I didn't use Bliss and Pink Flakes from Woody's Goodies. I started with a fully prepped and sanded 15 ounce straight skinny from Parish Tumblers spray painted it midnight blue and let that dry for about an hour before I moved into these steps. So doing this cup, I like to start with the foil flakes first. Now it doesn't matter what color flake you start with, but what I like to do to apply my flakes is I use a purple just glue stick. It's one that you can get at Walmart. I actually have a whole box of them. And here I'm starting with the green flake. So you can use tweezers. I just use my hands because it's easier. And I just smooth the flakes on over the glue that I laid down with the glue stick. So I just lay it down with my fingers, getting nice, great coverage. I will say though, with the glue stick, the glue dries really fast. This is both a positive and a negative because if you're moving too slow, then you have to reapply the glue. But you just apply the flakes and then I just use a cheap chip brush and go over and really make sure to get off any of the excess, but also kind of give it a little bit of a distressed look. You don't want it very uniform for the look that I achieved. So make sure just to get off any excess, brush off any of the extra foil flakes and then just move on to the next session. There is no right and wrong for laying this down, but what I like to do is to do one color all at one time and then move on to the next just to make it a little bit easier. So this is just applying the green foil to the cup. So again, just every which way, just kind of making it look more organic and not uniform. Apply the foil flakes with your fingers, pat it down, and then come in with the chip brush to remove any excess. I will say there is going to be foil everywhere. So just prepare yourself. This is not a clean process. It's gonna be all over your shirt and your hair. You're probably gonna have to shower afterwards but I'm just warning you. <laughs> After the green, I moved into the purple. And one thing to definitely mention when you're putting down your foils is you wanna kinda make sure that you're mapping out in your head how many colors you're using and the real estate or the amount of blank space that you have on your cup. Just because we are going to be applying different glitters, a whole bunch of different color foils, you don't want to put too many foils all at one time of one specific color. But if you do run into an instance where you you find yourself with way too much of one color, whether it be purple or pink, you can layer the foils on top of themselves. Just make sure that the bottom layer is dry before you put more glue on it. Otherwise, the, um, the foil will move when you apply more glue with the glue stick over the top. As I continue to apply the foil to the cup, I do want to call out that there are other adhesives that you can use if you don't have a glue stick. Always use what you have instead of feeling like you have to go out and buy other things, but you can apply foils using the Tacket method or even Mod Podge if you wanted to. I just find that for me, the glue stick works the best because I don't want to wait for the Mod Podge to dry before I apply it. 
So both the purple and the green flakes, like I mentioned before, are from PDB. And here I moved into the red, and this is from Radioactive Glitter. If you haven't checked them out, they have a wide array of foils. Um, and Misty Lynn, actually, with Sweet Magnolia, turned me on to them. And I'm super happy with uh, the quality of the flakes and just how vibrant they are. So definitely check them out. All the flakes that I used were great, except for the silver. I had to move to the uh, Michaels brand. It was just like the, I think it's the craft art or whatever it is. But I would say that you can tell a difference between some of the lower end foils compared to what she, the, the different ones I'm using here. So if you are going to purchase them, I do recommend purchasing them from either like Woody's Goodies, Radioactive Glitter, or PDB because you do get what you paid for. And you can definitely see a, the difference when they're applied to the cup. Also, when you're applying the foils, make sure to apply some to the bottom. I always think it's a nice touch when you can carry the the colors or the design to the bottom so that it's not just like a different blank um, canvas. I forgot to do this when I was going through the foil and the glitter, so I end up doing an all purple glitter bottom, but I think it could have been cool to apply different colors and do more of an intricate design on the bottom, but I still think the all purple turned out really nicely. I'm just giving the suggestion in case you wanted to make the cut more of your own. I finally get to the pink section of the foils and I thought this really helped to pull together all of the different colors. These flakes are from Woody's Goodies and I really like this pink color because it's more of, I don't want to say a rose gold because that's not what it is, but that's originally what I had purchased it for was for like the rose gold type color and it's just absolutely beautiful. It is definitely more of a muted pink than a hot pink, but I just thought it was a really nice combination with all the different colors we were playing with. Another thing I wanted to include is don't be afraid to kind of mix up the different shapes that you're laying down with your glue because when I originally started the cup I was almost doing not like paint splatter but almost like paint swatches and like thicknesses of the different foils but then as I moved on with the different colors that I was using I really did more almost like streaky distressed lines that were a little bit thicker and I think the combination of the two really played well together so don't be afraid to mix it up try different shapes you could always just wipe it off um, but definitely I think the combination of the different kinds of placements of the foils really helped to give the overall look that we were going for so here it is the dreaded silver and I think you can see it even there as I'm putting it down but it's just not covering as well as the other flakes that I had used so Again, I would invest in some nicer ones. This is me switching over to the Michaels brand, which is fine. It just didn't have the reflectiveness that the other flakes did. So it still works great. I loved the pop of silver that it did add, but invest in the nicer stuff if you can. I just, I recommend it and you have a better quality product. Since the silver is the last color that I'm laying down, you'll definitely notice that I use it more of a filler just to kind of give it that little pop of brightness. And I think it helps. So kind of back to the last comments of using different shapes with your glue. I think even using some short like little bursts of the chrome or the silver, whatever you want to call it, really added to like the texture. So don't be afraid again, if you have like a little spot that you need to fill in, by all means, just put some, glue stick down or whatever adhesive you're using, apply it and it's going to look beautiful. There is again, no right or wrong to this technique and it's going to come out amazing. After the last foil was placed, I went ahead and I just grabbed a little just brush that I showed there and the devil's glue, also known as Mod Podge. And I started to apply different streaks to the cup. So here I just get a big pile of my Mod Podge going so that I could easily dip my paintbrush into it. I am not mixing any um, acrylic paint into the Mod Podge that you've seen me do before, just because we're working quickly. And also since we're using metallic glitters they really stand on their own they don't need that colored base that you see with some of the more like iridescent and opals that are out there so I only really painted two stripes at a time and the first color that I'm starting here is that fuchsia rose purple from bougie glitter boutique and the reason why I'm only doing two stripes at a time is because Mod Podge dries quickly and the last thing I want is I do all of this beautiful work on the cup and then I have just dried spots of Mod Podge so 
Work quickly, only maybe do one or two stripes at a time, cover it with glitter, and then move on to the next section. But literally, all you're doing is taking your paintbrush, just lightly gliding it over the cup, and then applying the glitter. Moving around, doing your different colors, and that's really it. There's no, again, right or wrong. Um, I did find that don't second guess yourself. Like I really wanted it to look more of a distressed and just kind of random looking stripes, kind of like that you see here. So don't feel like they have to be absolutely perfect. Just get some Mod Podge on your paintbrush, glide it down the cup and apply it with glitter. Because if you overthink it, then you're not gonna like it. And I've seen this play out time and time again when I'm working on cups. One thing I also want to mention, and I'm doing it right here, is also have a dry brush on hand just to kind of brush off any excess that you have because you really do want to prevent cross-contamination since you are working with so many different colors. So just brush off any excess after you finish a glitter color and then move into the next. Which, speaking about moving into the next, this is Mossy Green from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And it is really the perfect Christmas green. I love it. I think it goes great with the green flakes that we put down because it just has that nice, like true Christmas green that you think of. So really love this color. But again, I'm just doing the exact same technique that I used with the purple. But one thing I do start to do, even though it's only the second color, is I start to put some stripes in the middle of the cup as well. With the purple, I really tried to stick at the top and bottom just to kind of start laying down those first couple of stripes. But I am starting to fill in that middle section because we want glitter there as well. So just kind of go every which way. And also, if you get all your glitters on and you're still seeing some bare spots, don't worry, you can absolutely go in a second time after that first round of glitter has dried. I do recommend sealing it first, but don't feel like you can't go in for a second more. Like, <laughs> go in for seconds, by all means. It's There's no calories in this, it's just glitter. So don't play with it necessarily until it's perfect, but don't be afraid to go back in and touch some stuff up if you aren't happy with the first go round. The next color I'm using is just like the silver um, for the cup and it's called Chrome from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And I love this because it is a true metallic glitter and it just pops. It's so vibrant and it's just got an amazing sparkle that you can see there. And I just love how much it just like is vibrant over the top of that navy blue, which you don't get that too often with too many glitters, but I just absolutely love this stuff. And it's almost like it's got its own light source. It stands out so much. Again, um, I just move on to the pink color, and the pink is another metallic from Bougie Glitter Boutique. It is called Persian Pearl, and I want to mention this because in the beginning, um, the glitter, and I think I already called this out, I showed was Bliss, but it wasn't a metallic, and I really wanted to make sure I was using metallic glitter so that it wouldn't be lost on the navy blue surface, and Persian Pearl was absolutely the right choice. Again, it just pops off the navy. You don't have to worry about laying down a colored base to get the color to really show up so I would say this was definitely a good choice and I highly recommend that if you do decide to use this cup that you do use the metallic colors of your glitter because it's going to cause a lot less headache and you're gonna get that true vibrancy that we're going for with this design Last but not least is Fire from Bougie Glitter Boutique, and I think this red is spectacular. I've used it on a ton of tutorials lately, so if you can't tell, I may or may not be slightly obsessed, but came in, filled in some of the spots that didn't have glitter yet. But one thing I do want to mention is you don't want to overly glitter this cup to the point where you can't see the foils underneath. The differentiation in color and texture with all the different items that we have going on is truly what makes this cup shine. So personal preference is I would let the foils show as much as possible and then um, complement their beauty with the glitter, but you don't want to get to a point where they're competing and then it just kind of becomes muddled. So choose your placements wisely, I guess is kind of the best way to put it, but also don't be afraid to like load up your cup and make it absolutely beautiful. I'm just trying to make sure that you don't necessarily think that I'm covering the cup with glitter because it does look like it from this angle, but I am just complementing the foils with the placement of the glitters. 
and to kind of showcase that, I think you can really see the difference between the foil shine and the glitter shine and how well they really, really play together. I let the cup dry for a good four to five hours. Then I spray sealed this pretty robustly, I guess is the best way to put it, two separate times with Rust-Oleum clear gloss spray paint, letting them dry for at least 45 minutes each time. And then I mixed up about 10 milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy to do the epoxy method for the bottom. Now, you're going to use less than a milliliter of epoxy, but like always, you wanna mix up at least 10 milliliters so that you get a good mix and you don't have just a sticky bottom because the epoxy wasn't mixed well enough together. The color I'm using is Fuchsia Rose and I think it was perfect. It just pops with that navy blue. But again, if you did wanna continue the line design and the foil design on the bottom, I think that would be just as beautiful. The cup file that I'm using here is from Creative Fabrica. I will list it in the description below. And I did an offset in design space and I, I'm going to record a tutorial for how to do that. It's just kind of cumbersome and I didn't want to overwhelm the whole video, but I cut an offset in the mirrored vinyl that you see here. And then I came in with a really pretty uh, red, a metallic vinyl for some of the words, and then also a green vinyl here. I'm just showing you how I layer the different components of a multicolor vinyl. So both with all in one piece or if you're more comfortable doing it letter by letter or piece by piece, do whatever makes you comfortable. But I do recommend taping down the sides of the base so that you don't have any lifting and in any unnecessary sticking. I also always use the backing paper for half of the decal to make sure that I have as few bubbles as possible and then anchor it on one side and then roll it down on the other. This prevents any bubbling, any unnecessary sticking in the wrong places and ruining your perfect decal that you already created. And look how beautiful that sucker truly is. But in all honesty, I will do a full tutorial on my vinyl and how I get it laid down right almost every time. I guess with sealing, I guess it wouldn't be one of my tutorials if I didn't showcase cleaning the rim with my flap wheel to expose that little sliver of stainless steel for the epoxy to adhere to. Again, not to sound like a broken record, but I do this to make sure that my final layers of epoxy have some stainless steel to attach to so that it seals all of my design work in and doesn't create the opportunity for liquids to get in behind the designs and for the epoxy to peel off because that's going to make an unhappy customer. So. Just take the time, make sure that you're sand, like you're using the flap wheel. And then I like to take a sanding block to come in and just smooth everything down so you don't have any pokey bits or cut lips from the flap wheel on your final layers of epoxy. Because the last thing that you ever want is to have to do more layers of epoxy than you need to because you missed a spot sanding or there was just a pokey place from when you were um, CD down or using the flap wheel at the top rims. I then take the sanding block and start to smooth out the bottom. Because we had the multiple like glitter strands or stripes if you want to call it that, it was a little bit lumpy on the bottom even though we just used a middle of the road cut of glitter. So I'm just making sure to get the bottom perfectly smooth because you don't want any rough spots. And then it was time to seal our vinyl. If you know me, you know I love to seal my vinyl, especially this metallic because it has a tendency to lift um, when it's under epoxy. So I seal it with a poly coat, move into two final coats of a little extra ink epoxy, and this baby was done. I just love how festive and all the pops of color that this tumbler surely has, and I hope it inspires you to try one of your own. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you are notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.